taken up the breakdowns of my fan base, and you guys have blown past quite a few countries to be the second most popular country in the world as far as fans of the skinhead gourmet go. So I put it out there and asked what kind of traditional English recipes would you guys like to see me do? I got more answers and said fish and chips than anything else. And since I got a cop, since I just had to tape the Wigan game from yesterday, I need something to eat while I sit down and watch a footy. So it seemed like a perfect fit. So this is the Skinhead Gourmet I Love England special. Alright, so since we're starting with the fish, we're going to have to make the batter and go from there. Now the fish I've picked out is I'm going to be using some cod that I have today, although you can use cod, pollock, tilapia, you want a firmer white fish to make a good fish and chips. The only white fish I would say for sure you want to avoid would be a Coney Island white fish. It's going to come out a little tough and rubbery. But we're going to start for the batter. We got two cups of just regular all-purpose baking flour in a bowl here. We're going to need one tablespoon of baking powder. Baking powder, not baking soda. Just You don't want to make that mistake. We're not making crack, so this is the stuff we need. We're going to put that right in. And then we're going to need about a teaspoon a teaspoon or so worth of salt. Either kosher salt, sea salt. I'm going to go with sea salt myself. If you can get gray French sea salt, it's going to bring out a little bit of extra flavor. And if you've got larger sea salt, just kind of break it up a little bit. We do want to make sure that the salt gets all the way through the mixture here. Then after that, we're just going to season everything to taste. So I'm going to make sure we've got a nice amount of black, crushed black pepper, as well as red cayenne pepper. And then from there, you pretty much just have to pick what you like, you know, what you like to go with fish. I'm going to put in a little bit of garlic powder just to bring out the flavor. And then a lot of people swear by either Old Bay or blackening seasoning. I'm a little bit more partial to blackening seasoning. Either one's going to work wonderfully. And then again, it's just get in as much as you think you're going to want as far as taste goes. You're going to want to mix everything up into a bowl just so that it's somewhat uniform and you're not seeing pockets of like you know pepper or anything through there because once you get all that mixed together we're going to get a bottle of a nice dark colored beer I'm going to go with Guinness it's about my favorite beer in the world and we're just going to start whisking and just slowly add the beer and you're just going to want to keep it going until you've got a nice smooth batter with right, no now once you've got your batter to a nice smooth even consistency you're ready to get the fish into it you're going to want to just take your fish push them through, make sure they're nice and well coated and just let any of the excess drip, drip off because the next thing we're going to do is dredge them and you don't want to get what you, we're going to be dredging in cornstarch you don't want to get your cornstarch all wet and like clumped together. It'll make for a crappy coating for each piece that you make after the first. So once your fish is done and ready, get it into that cornstarch and just get a nice coating. Okay, now's the probably one of the most important steps of the whole process. I like to pan fry at home. If you have a small like at home deep fryer, for sure you can go with that. It's easier. Be end up being less mess and all of that. But what I'm going to do is I've got a saute pan. You can see I've got about three quarters of an inch of oil down into the pan. I'm going to put this on and keep a meat thermometer handy if you've got one. Once your oil gets up to about 350, you're going to want to let it go there. If you skin on for this. We're going to want to cut our potato in half to start with. And then this is another one. Yeah, you can always go by how you like them. I like to keep my chips just around half inch or a little bit thinner. But you're just going to want to cut right down to the right down the potato like this. And these are going to be damn good when they're ready. Once you get these cut, you're going to want to get a bowl with some cold water and put them in. Let them sit for a little bit. A little bit of the starch is going to leach out, plus they're not going to get all sorts of brown and mushy while you're waiting on your oil to heat One up. One more thing that you can do, if you're going to be, if you've got a beer batter going, and you're going to be deep frying, get your batter and your dredge ready, take some onions, 
you can just cut them at about a half inch thick. If you can keep your rings intact, pop these in your batter and dredge them and when it's time to fry, you can make a damn fine onion ring, which I'm sure probably irritates some of my fish and chips purists out there. But it's tasty, goes great with anything else fried, and especially if you're going to be spending your afternoon watching a few football games. This really just goes perfect. Goes good with beer, goes good All with right, good time. Alright, so now we know we got our oil hot enough. I'm going to start by getting a couple of my onion rings started. Because when you've deep fry in oil, one thing that you can count on is anything that's been in that oil, that flavor is going to stay there until you get rid of it. So a little bit of onion, I'm going to enjoy the flavor of and everything else. The fish we're going to want to save for last, because some people just don't like a fishy taste in chip. Alright, our onion rings have been down for a few minutes. They've got a nice golden brown. You're going to want to take these, either put them onto a wire rack, or if you're like me, a small wire basket over a pan. It's a great place to let them sit and drain for a minute. And then we can move on and start getting some of our chips in the oil. Alright, so just like our onion rings, we want to make sure our oil is at a right, the right temperature and just get them right in the oil. And make sure you've got enough room so that they can move around and that you've got all the heat being able to move around and cook these fries while they're in there. You don't want to overload your pan. You also want to make sure you get the water pretty much at least shaken off of the potatoes so this oil is going to be erupting and expanding very quickly and making a very big and very painful mess. Now one thing that I've found makes for a great chip is when you're cooking them, let them get to about, let them cook for about two to three minutes. You actually want to remove them from the oil, give them some place to sit and rest, because what we'll end up doing is we'll fry them a second time. And they'll end up just getting a little bit softer, it's going to break down some of those starches a little bit, going up and down in temperature, and you'll end up with a nicer chip at the end of it. Alright, I guess this is what I could refer to as the money shot of the episode. Here comes the fish. Now since I did let him sit for an extra for a minute while I was waiting on the oil, I'm gonna retry to the board starch since a lot of it is in the batter. We're gonna get them in this oil. We're gonna cook pretty quick. We're gonna get let them cook for about two minutes and then you're gonna wanna flip them over just to make sure that they're gonna be cooked evenly. It's also one of the reasons I do like to cook them into thinner strips. I know I do love a great big sized wedge of fish, but I know if I'm cooking it at home. I know I can be a little impatient when I'm making food. You keep them a little bit smaller, they'll cook faster, and they'll cook more uniformly. Alright, now once you've gotten your fish a nice and deep golden brown, you're going to want to let this rest on a wire rack or in a wire basket. You're going to want to salt it right away. Let everything sit and rest for a minute. Well, this is our finished product. We've got our chips, our fish, and a couple of onion rings. If I had room on the plate, it would for sure need a couple of mushy peas and a little slice of lemon. Give everything a quick squeeze of the lemon and then hit it with some malt vinegar. I'm going to have one of my good friends from St. James Gate join me. Perfect recipe for a good day at home watching the footy. Oil and enjoy. Let's go!